G'day, I'm Jake from Make Science Fun. Thanks for joining me today. A real physics episode today. How does a transformer work? Or even what is a transformer? Now, transformers are used like, you know, for your phone charger, or well, this is an old school one, or for your Christmas lights. Transformers um, can be found in schools. You know, the power packs, the ones where you drop the voltage down to two, four, six, eight, ten, or 12 volts to make it safe. Well, there's a big transformer um, inside a power pack that uh, allows it to drop the voltage down to a safe voltage. Um, inside the microwave, um, this thing's called the magnetron. Now, it's not a transformer, but it requires a very high voltage to produce the microwaves, which will come out of here. Now, to get that very high voltage, you need a, oh, this thing's heavy, a step-up transformer. A step-up transformer. Now, the step-up transformer basically has two coils of wires and um, one set of coils has like a certain number of turns and then for the step-up uh, transformer, it's got a whole heap more turns. So, um, this microwave also has a step-down transformer. And so it takes a voltage of 240 volts because that's what we have in Australia um, coming out of our power points. It drops the 240 volts down probably to about 12 volts and that produces a small current. There's, um, and that current uh, controls the electrons um, and that's for, just for the, like the control system of the microwave oven. So the microwave's got two transformers, a step down for the um, circuit board and a step up for the magnetron. So what is a transformer? Well, tiny, 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 tiny little bit of science first. Firstly, I've got a coil of wire. Now this coil of wire has got 300 turns or 300 loops of wire. Now, if you pass electricity, pass electricity through this coil of wire, you make a magnetic field. So, this machine here um, basically allows me to control the current flowing through this coil of wire. And so now I've got a current going backwards and forwards through here. Now have a look at here, I've got a little um, device called a magnoscope. And if you can have a look, see how it's moving? See how that, it's detecting the magnetic field and that magnetic field's changing. It's changing with time. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Changing the current through this coil of wire, it changes the magnetic field. All right, so that's the first thing. You've got a coil of wire with a current flowing through it, produces a magnetic field. And in this case, it's a changing magnetic field. Have a look at this, we can actually visualize it. Whoa, look at that. You can see how the current's going backwards and forwards through this coil of wire. Yeah? So, yeah? Whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. The second thing that we need to know is that if you have a coil of wire, if you have a coil of wire, have a look what happens when you put a changing magnetic field through that wire. Look at the, look at the, um, the needle going backwards and forwards. There's a changing magnetic flux through that coil and that changing magnetic flux produces a current. So think about it, think about it. I could actually have two coils, one producing the changing magnetic field and the other one receiving the changing magnetic field and that should generate an electric current. Let's have a look. And are we ready? Here we go, here we go. And look, see the tiny little movement? Okay, it's not much, but there's a tiny little movement there. That's because I need to try and intensify the magnetic field through the two. So I've got an iron bar here. Now have a look at this. Just by putting the iron bar, sort of um, links the magnetic flux between the two. Now, this is actually a transformer. It's a one-to-one -one transformer. Uh, the voltage in is equal to the voltage out. And it can be used to isolate an electric circuit. But, what about a step-up transformer? Are you ready? Okay, for a step-up transformer, what I need is I need to have more coils. 
So this one doesn't have 300 turns, it's got 600 turns. And so, if I connect that coil up like so, I should have a step up transformer. And look at that, it goes much, much higher. I've doubled the voltage by having double the number of coils. Now you might think, bingo, he's made energy out of nothing. Well, although I've doubled the voltage, unfortunately, the current coming out is halved. And so the power output is actually the same. Well, I'll probably lose a bit of power to be honest because it's, this is not an ideal one. Um, how to make it more ideal? Let me show you. Um, I actually can reduce the flux linkage problem by using an iron core like this. That goes on that side. And then I'm going to put this on this side. I'm going to really reduce the flux leakage by putting this bar on top. Whoa, look at that. Now that's a far more efficient transformer. The, the, the flux from one coil, or from the primary coil, is actually carried to the secondary coil. And so I've reduced my flux loss, my magnetic field loss. And um, look at this, I'm getting a much bigger voltage. So step up transformers have got more coils on the secondary coils and step down transformers have got less coils on the secondary arm um, coil. So that's the step down transformer and this is the step up transformer. This, this, this thing represents um, power distribution. And over here is our um, coal powered fire station all the way out, you know, in the country. And if we try to transmit the, the current at the current that it's produced, all the current, the current would produce a lot of heat and we'd basically lose all the heat in the transmission lines. So what we've got, we've got big transformers out at the power station, which step the voltage right up. By stepping the voltage right up, we reduce the current to a tiny little bit. And the power loss in the wires is equal to I squared R. I being the current, R being the resistance of the wires. Now I squared, well that's squared. So if you, if you, halve, if you, if you halve the current, you reduce the power loss by a factor of four. If you make the current go down by a third, you reduce the power loss by a factor of nine. It's a squared relationship. And so basically what we do is we step up the voltage, which reduces the current. And then when the electricity rises to the city, well, if you, if you had 110,000 volts, you'd like fry anything in sight. And so you need step down transformers. And basically the, um, you have a step down transformer like um, at, on the fringe of the city, which will drop it down to about 11,000 volts. And then it will go via um, at 11,000 volts to your street. And then at your street, you'll have a transformer which will drop it down to 240 volts, which is relatively, well, it's not safe safe. <laughs> Don't put your fingers in the power point, but at least the electricity won't jump out of the power point and zap you 240 volts. And then most appliances will have transformers in them um, to reduce the voltage down even more. Okay. All right, well, thanks for joining me today on Make Science Fun, and I um, hope you've had your uh, physics fill for today, and I'll catch you again soon. Bye for now.